Marnie Wasserman and Jesse Chapp is here from the Ultimate Health Podcast. Welcome back to another Focus Friday, where we bring you information and inspiration to set your weekend off on the right foot. Yeah, these Focus Fridays have been so much fun. We hope you guys have been enjoying them. It's just great to connect with you guys on a really personal level. Yeah, and today I'm super excited because we're going to get into the conversation of food and eating to thrive. That is the title today because Jesse and I really believe that what you choose to eat should make you thrive. And you guys may have seen on Instagram across social media, the two of us, a bunch of our health foodie friends, we shared a graphic that uh, is all about eating what makes you thrive. Yeah, and it got such a good response. You know, all of our, as Jesse said, all of our colleagues, we all posted at the same time on the same day, and you could see the response. And this graphic kind of came about because of how we all felt about the film, What the Health. And it's not about, you know, it being right or wrong, although a lot of the claims that were made in the film, we do believe were a little bit false and far-fetched. But it's about really harnessing what matters to you in terms of what you choose to eat and making good choices. So it's not about being vegan or paleo. It's about eating what makes you feel good. And we've been through our own journeys, and Jesse and I are going to share that today, how we've come from being vegan, vegetarian, tested the waters of keto, paleo, and now we're in this place where we're feeling really great with our varied diet. And we'll get into details in a second. So for me, my diet took a real shift in chiropractic school. I was on YouTube watching these raw food leaders, people like Matt Monarch, Paul Neeson, Kevin and Amory Gianni from the Reading Aid Health Show, and they were all talking about this raw vegan diet, so I began to include more and more plants into my routine. I'm not sure if I ever was fully on vegan. I think I was probably for a period of time, but I was definitely vegetarian for a number of years, and years later when I met Marnie... Right before that, I had actually started to include a little bit of fish into my routine. So when I met Marnie, the uh, plant-based queen, it was a little bit awkward to try and figure out what I was going to do diet-wise at that point, you know, with her eating basically a vegan diet at the time. And yeah, just just kind of felt the pressure of, of her and her plant-based force and eventually went back to a vegetarian diet. Yeah, you know, I know that that was a big influence on you because we wanted to, food was really important to us. That's how, that's part of how we met through the food health world. And I was pretty adamant on on being vegetarian and also my partner being vegetarian. I remember, Jess, you found something that I had written about what I was looking for in a partner. And one of those things was I want him to be vegetarian. So I think you felt the pressure to to kind of eat that way. Yeah, well, I think I felt the pressure more so later on after I had read that, and I felt like I wanted to start including more chicken, fish, some entry-level meats for me at that point, and just knowing how you felt about having a partner that was on the same page, and obviously at that point, you were thriving on that diet, and yeah, I remember you you were there to support me no matter what I was going to do, but that underlying pressure was definitely there. Yeah, and I was thriving on that diet, the plant-based, vegetarian. I was vegan again for a short period of time as well because I did include a little bit of sheep and goat dairy. I did thrive. I felt amazing for several years. So I'd say for about five years, I, I peaked. I was, you know, optimized on this diet. I felt amazing day in, day out. I had balanced meals. But over the last three to four years, things started to change in the way I started to feel my digestion, my energy, and I started learning about what was happening on a cellular level with my digestion and my gut. And I still didn't believe that my diet was the result of it until I really started to open my mind to that possibility because my reasons for becoming vegetarian were both ethical and health. So the health I can wrap my head around because I need to make changes for what is going to make me ultimately healthy. The ethical was really hard because I'm an animal lover, so I didn't really know how to work with that. But between Jesse, my parents, my naturopath, I started to understand that my body was not thriving on a vegan or vegetarian diet anymore. So I needed to start expanding my horizons, and I did. And I did it very slowly because I needed to do what was right for me and how I wanted to incorporate things back in. So I, you know, over the course of two years, I brought everything in from from eggs to fish to chicken to a little bit of red meat. And now I'm in a place where I'm still kind of working through it, but I feel like I'm 
eating to thrive. I feel like day in, day out, my my body's working better. My digestion's feeling good. Jesse and I are on the same page. Like we both feel good about what we're choosing to eat every day. And we're not doing it because of any kind of pressure or what we think we should be eating. We're doing what we know we should be eating. Yeah. And for you, when you made the switch and decided to include meats back in your diet, I know there was a lot of pressure because you had built this online brand. By that point, you had actually written plant-based diet for dummies and you'd put that message out to the world and we're standing behind it. So I was there by your side watching all this happen. And I think another point to make here is the fact that our podcast, I feel, had a really huge impact on you making the dietary switch when week in, week out, we were talking to all these different health experts and so many had similar stories where they had been on a plant-based diet for a period of time, their health started to decline and they had to make changes. So I think hearing that week in, week out, it just started to click for you and you realize that maybe I need to do something different here. Yeah, I was able to let go my beliefs around, you know, holding up a certain status or keeping you know, my my tight knit community and my dogma, you know, the the focal point, I was able to let that go for the sake of my health. So that being said, Jesse and I have a few takeaways for you guys to start eating for your own health and eating to thrive. Just to come full circle before we get into that, we should probably just explain where we are fully on our diet right now. We're doing grain free at this point. There are some pseudo grains that we've had come into the mix a little bit but we're eating a heavily plant-based diet overall and we're including good quality meats, full range of meats. And it just feels really good because we're at this point now with our diet where we don't have specific rules. We're just out to eat good quality stuff, things that are going to nourish our bodies and allow our health to thrive. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. We should really share what we're eating. And Jesse's right. Plant-based is still the core. Every time I'm building us a lunch or a dinner, There is always going to be greens on the plate. There's always going to be sweet potato, avocado, carrots, beets, and that's the majority. Whatever animal protein we are eating is a very small component, and it's also important to point out that not every day or every meal we're eating animal protein. So we are finding other ways to still thrive eating on plants just without grains now. That's kind of the big shift that's been in my diet for sure is not having beans and grains as the focal point. Now it's more fats and and greens and lots of veggies. And we're totally open to the evolution. We realize that this diet is feeling good for us right now. We're going to continue to embrace it, at least in the near future. But we're open to continuing the evolution as things continue to evolve. And as long as we feel good, that's really the goal. So yeah, I think now we can get into some of the tips that we have for helping you guys eat to thrive. So I think the first thing to point out is really discovering what your why is, Why are you eating the way that you do? Whatever that is right now, what is your reason? Is it for health? Is it for energy? Is it for, you know, maybe you work out, you're an athlete, whatever it is, kind of break down your reasons for choosing the current diet that you have and really start to understand how that makes you feel. Do you feel good every day? Are you sleeping well? Are you pooping well? What, you know, what's going on in your body? And maybe you want to start tracking that with a food journal or maybe talking to a nutritionist or a functional medicine doctor, whatever works for you to maybe start to isolate and lay out what your diet looks like so you can start to analyze a little bit more closely. And realize that we are all different. Different diets are going to work better for certain people. And we are continuing, like I just got to a minute ago, the fact that we're going to all continue to evolve over a lifetime. And if something is working great for you right now, be open to the fact that you, as you evolve, that may change and you might need to change your diet up over time. Yeah. And even if you are eating a really healthy diet right now and you know certain changes need to be made, I also want to point out not to be too hard on yourself. You know, Jesse and I kind of got into this and I think we talked about this on our episode with Jordan Younger is not to become too obsessed with healthy eating. That if you are eating healthy and let's say you are trying to eat gluten-free and then you eat some gluten, it's not the end of the world. So also just be a little bit lighter on yourself when it comes to what you're choosing to eat within within whatever dietary choices that you're making day to day. An important point too is the fact that you want to make sure you're not getting caught up in a certain paradigm and only exposing yourself to information that fits in that paradigm. So Are you like I was before, just watching all the YouTube videos that are focused around raw food or paleo, vegan, whatever the different paradigm is that you're caught up in, 
make sure you're exposing yourself to all the information out there in the health world so you're making critical, well-informed decisions because if you get into documentaries or reading or whatever it is in certain little niches, then you can just get closed off to the fact that there is all these other options out there. So just don't get caught up in that trap, and I think a lot of us do. And one of the last things that I'll mention is that, as you guys know, if you've been a listener of the show for a long time, you know that we've covered all pretty much, I think, of the dietary preferences. We've had vegan guests on. We've had paleo, keto. There's so much information out there. You might just need to extract different points from different people, whether it's our show, different books, different blogs, YouTube, or conferences, wherever you're getting your information, is to take all the bite-sized pieces that work for you and make sense for you. So also just knowing that Jesse and I are very inclusive and believe that everyone needs to carve out their own path. So we hope this got you guys thinking, looking at your diet, looking at different options out there and making sure you're eating what is making you personally thrive. And share with us, share on Instagram, you know, where you're listening to this episode or maybe something that you're currently eating that makes you thrive. Tag us at Ultimate Health Podcast. We want to know what makes you thrive. Have a great weekend, you guys. We'll talk soon. Take care. Have a good one, guys.